Hi, my name is Daniel Baer. Um, I'm from Lebanon, Oregon. Not originally, I was born in Walla Walla, Washington. Um, I'm 22 years old, going to be 23 November 1st. Uh, I, right now, I live in an uh, amazing man of God's garage. This is my home. It's my awesome pad. So here's my desk, my old rogue guitar. Um, it's my place, it's my bed, that's my dog, Taco. Taco, hi Taco. What's up dude? It's my road dog. Um, my guitars, laptop, sleeping place, where I dream about Jesus. Anyhow, so um, I'm just feeling really led right now by the Holy Spirit to um, start making these videos. Uh, for one, I go around a lot just in general when I'm out and about like at Walmart or anywhere else I testify everywhere I go I'm 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 a believer in Jesus Christ I, I love my Lord and Savior who died on the cross for me I full-heartedly believe that Jesus Christ died rose again and uh, sent his spirit most importantly one of the most monumental things in my life is is coming to the knowledge of why Jesus Christ died on the cross which I'm learning more and more about every single day so much about the mystery that you know has only just now been revealed and um, just the revelation of my father's love towards me you know and understanding the three different a lot of people get um, what's the word confused at the Trinity they don't understand the Trinity I, I've always kind of had a grasp of it I don't know why you know at, at least recently since I've been saved I've been saved for a year June 24th last year I was uh, traveling, I was homeless for, well, I traveled three, you know, three and a half years, I'm, I don't want to lie, but three years on and off, living in people's homes, couch surfing, uh, you know, just totally addicted to pot, alcohol, acid, um, I, I used to do meth, I had been through my bouts with almost every drug, you know, I never did heroin or anything, got close, and, um, I traveled and, and pretty much lived on the road and in people's houses, whoever would pick me up and take me in. And, and uh, you know, I went through my bouts of womanizing and, and pornography. I went through um, just so much that the Lord delivered me from and is still every single day delivering me from. Uh, you know, I, I'm just a living testimony of what Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit can do inside of a person. You know, the Bible says that we're a new creation in Christ. And I completely, full-heartedly believe that. Um, through the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I've been made a new creation. See, we know about the, the water baptism, and it says that, you know, unless one is born again of, I believe Jesus says that to Nicodemus, unless one is born again of water and spirit, they will never see the kingdom of heaven, you know? And, um, and, and, there's a big importance behind that. I'm not going to delve so wholeheartedly into that right now, but I really just want to declare and glorify God for what he's done in my life and for the struggles that I just feel like there's someone right now that's watching this, that's going to watch this. I'm going to post this on Tumblr and uh, it's a, you know, I feel more underground mainly for Christianity on such a place like this because it's so dark and so there's so much porn and so much bad stuff on this website. But I feel like there's, there's some people who, um, have heard the truth, who have gotten to know the truth. The truth is Jesus. And and he might be leading you to this video. And I, I just want to inspire you that you're not alone in the struggles day to day. And that if you've been like looking for more, you know, like one of my biggest struggles after I got saved and, and totally wrecked by God, I'm telling you, like I was so addicted to drugs, so addicted, I couldn't go a day without pot or alcohol. It turned to alcohol because that was easier to get, you know, in some states, pots, not even, you can't find it or you get ripped off trying to get it. I got ripped off plenty of times, got sick of that. So I'd rather get drunk because it's legal. And, um, you know, it just got to the point, man, where God had to come in such a way to me and he wrecked me in the spirit. You know, I, I used to know what a holy roller was and I'd see these people who would speak in tongues and whatnot. And I, you know, they, charismatic you know and uh, a lot of people believe those gifts died off with the apostles i know they haven't god's proven these things to me um you know i i i speak in tongues i it doesn't really matter you know once you meet god it's almost like 
whatever, you know, I, all my cares go out the door, whatever you want me to do. If you want me to jabber and do these types of things, which that's not what it is, it's a, it's a heavenly language, but whatever you want me to do, God, I will do. You know, that's, that's what it is. Count the cost, and if you're willing to give up everything for Jesus, he'll give you everything back in return and, you know, and take your life and, and crucify everything of the old man and of this fleshly nature. And um, so through that, I, I got, I met Holy Spirit. You know, I was in the middle of Montana, in the middle of nowhere, and this dude comes up and picks me up with his family. And you know, he's got three kids in his car, didn't even ask his wife to pick me up, just kind of did it, you know. And so I knew it was God appointed. And he takes me to this revival that's happening, a non-denominational you know, big old revival, mainly Pentecostal in all honesty, you know, everybody there was that, but nobody claimed it. They just were people that loved God, loved Jesus. And I had been praying for months, you know, I was still so addicted out of my mind to pot and alcohol and all these different things. And, you know, I was, I was just, I was totally heartless towards people. And this, this calling out and come about you know i was just like lord i'm sick and tired of it i'm condemning myself every single day so i get to this revival and it took three nights for god to finally break through my pride you know i thought i was at a freak show i'm just like around these people and they're so nice so smiley you know and there's a bit of conviction and conviction happening in my heart for the way i've been living for the way i've, I've judged christians for the way that i've judged people and um finally i just the third night, I, I mean, this little voice, and I know it was Holy Spirit, said, go up there. You know, they were doing altar calls, and I, one of my biggest pet peeves was that. I did not want to do that, man. I didn't want to go up and start confessing all of my sins and let my garbage go. Because it had such a hold on me, and I even got delivered that night. I mean, from at least three demons, I, I believe. And um, I went up that night, and I asked for supernatural ability, and, and this is where it came in. The Lord had just, like wrecked my life holy spirit came down and he's a tangible force i don't know how many christians i've met that have never met holy spirit they've never i didn't know until nine months ago ten months ago that holy spirit was a person he's a personality he's a living being he's here with me right now he lives inside of me and he, and he speaks through me and he he he's a person and he has feelings and he's amazing and and there's a lot of christians nowadays that are are, and I'm speaking to you and all that, that person who he's just calling out lately. He's been speaking to you and you've been asking for more. You've been asking for more. What is it? You know, that's been on my heart lately. I feel like this is almost speaking to me more than anything, but um, more to this life, more to like, why God, am I always supposed to be miserable? Is it always supposed to be, I'm got to wait to get to heaven before my life actually means something to me on this planet. And, um, you know, I thought when I gave you my heart, Jesus, that everything would just be great and dandy. No, there's an adversary of your soul. But God, through your surrenderance and through, um, you know, through the cross and through you picking up your cross and denying self and going through, um, like my apostle says all the time, and all, my spiritual father, this guy who picked me up off the streets, I'll get to all these things of how I've come to live in this garage and how I've come into this place. But it all started at that revival. Anyway, um, he always says to me that, uh, you know, God's got to build character inside of you. And he's been doing that with me. And that's a lot of breaking and pruning and crush smashing and destroying a lot of the old nature. You know, every single day I am so fully aware of the old man. You know, the Bible says put off the old man and put on the new. And that's through crucifixion, crucifying every single day. Paul said, I put my flesh into subjection. I put, you know, that old man, this nature, this, this, this demonic nature into subjection. And I put it down. And I've just in these, these past 10 months, you know, really come to understand what that means every single day. And that we're in a war. Our body wars against us. And you also have the devil out there, the adversary of your soul who's working against you. And until God can put this flesh into subjection and put this old nature, this personality that's been corrupted, this, your soul, um, there's, there's a war and, you know, war is not pretty. And, and Hebrews 12 even talks about it like this. There will be times when God chastens you, you know, he chastises you f to, for your good, because only illegitimate children don't receive discipline. You know, they call them disciples for a reason. Jesus was not always lovey-dovey on his disciples. There were times of correction. I mean, he even said to, to Peter, 
you know, and I feel this way sometimes, and I, like, you know, one minute you're like, oh my God, you're the son of God. I got a revelation from God. You're the son of God. And he goes, Peter, that was not revealed to you by flesh, but by my father in heaven. You know, Holy Spirit told you that, man. That's, and he goes, big old pat on his back. Jesus loves me. This is awesome. This is, this is so awesome. And the next minute he go, he's going, no, you're not going to the cross. You're not going to the cross, Jesus. I will not let you die. And he says, Satan, get behind me. You know, that's a lot of how I feel like your walk or my walk has been as of late. Um, I'm only a year old in Christ, so I, I like to act like I'm, um, you know, a million years old in this thing. I'm, I'm a big old man in the spirit, but I'm just a baby and I'm learning how to be loved. I'm learning about, you know, spirits of rejection that have come against me all my life and that there's hope. We have to persevere as, um, you know, children of God. We mature into sons of God slowly but surely anyway back to my testimony and whatnot um you know i got saved i got wrecked that night i was at this revival man this beautiful cabin big old thing it must have had at least 200 no maybe 100 to 200 people if that and it and it was really just um you know this amazing atmosphere when i got into it, it was like electricity it was a vibe that i you know i was into that new age stuff so i was like the vibe man the vibe there's a lot of that going around nowadays and and i caught a really nice vibe from there but there was a small voice in my head that always kept telling me to leave you know Duh, you don't belong here this isn't right these people will never understand you you're not supposed to be here the devil man and 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 my soul you know it did not want to be there and uh you know because it says even though um, man liked the darkness more than the light you know and and i can't remember exactly what i can't name scripture precisely so forgive me still still growing in that every single day the lord's renewing my mind through those things and um you know i just remember persevering we were always fighting that voice when we want to go up you know the altar call is like where you just drop it all and you go and you pick up your cross i believe and i was so scared too because the enemy will just lie to you and just tell you all these things that aren't true about you because we have to understand we can't look at ourselves any other way than what jesus looked at us through the father the father's vision of us you know he he and G, and the father looks at us through the blood of christ redeemed um totally remitted of all sins because jesus became sin and condemned it in the flesh he became the thing that he hated most condemned it put it away sin is no longer a problem the only problem is with this flesh and the old personality in the nature that tries to rise up against the spirit of God that lives in me now. So um, one of the most important things we have to realize is when Holy Spirit comes, this is why baptism of the Holy Spirit is so important. If it wasn't important, it wouldn't be in the Bible. I know Holy Spirit feels that way. It irritates him so much that people think that you can, and I'm not saying some people are ignorant. They don't know any better. I knew no better. As a 13-year-old kid, man, I remember going to church and I asked Jesus into my heart. I didn't feel any different. I tell you what, there was a glimpse of happiness that much, that much change in my life. And, um, you know, there's other people out there. You're wondering, you know, what more is there to it? And I'm going to tell you, it's, it's the fire. It's the spirit. Go to, go to Acts 2, 2.23, I believe it is. And, and after Jesus Christ was crucified, he says, I send a helper to you. You know, I go away because, you know, if I don't go, like Jesus was only in one place. After he died, he sent his spirit, the same spirit that resurrected him from the dead, so he could be everywhere with us. And so that we could be a part of this new thing. Um, one of the revelations I got from my spiritual father is, and this is so amazing, it's mind-blowing, man. It's, it's better than anything I could ever think of. It's, it's almost dreamlike. What Jesus did was God created this perfect character inside of Jesus Christ through the spirit of God. So you got Jesus on the planet, fully man, fully God. Then you got the spirit that resides in Jesus, which is the Holy Spirit, the Paracletos. Then you have Father, God of all creation, the Father of everything, who is God himself. You know, and um, those are just the three personalities of God, but they're all one. And, and, it, and it can be really unconfusing if you just look at it like God has to come to you as a father sometimes. God has to come as a brother, a big brother. He has to come as... A helper too you know i i am the bride of christ man and and 
you know, he's my husband. Like Jesus is my, my, my go-to guy. He is my husband for all you women out there, you know, who need a man or you, you have to look to your man to be that strong arm in your life, that, that man that carries you through. That's what Jesus is for us as well. And, uh, for each one of us. And so anyways, um, God wrought this character out inside of Jesus. He, through 30 years of life till the 30, 30th year before he started his ministry for 30 years, he built this divine character inside of Christ with the Holy Spirit. And it was the first fruits of what this new race he's starting so, so what we have is before the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament would come and reside on a man, he would come and, and, you know, sit on a person. But now he lives inside of them. It says that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Before there were no people that actually had Holy Spirit that lived in them. That's why God had to flood the earth because people were just flesh. And if you're just flesh, understand Peter denied Christ three times. He didn't have the Holy Spirit. So um, I just really feel like this is an emphasis that Holy Spirit just rises up in me and wants to speak about a lot. I, I tell people all the time, and, and some people get so captivated, they just get glued on to me. Like, you know, it's like Holy Spirit is just absolutely drawing them in. And they ha it's something they've been craving. Their spirit inside of them is just starving for this. And mine does too, all the time, you know. If I go a few days without reading my Bible or watching a really great sermon and all that by Holy Spirit, I just, I just, I need that. I need that to survive. Our spirit needs to eat as well as our body needs to eat. It's, it's, it's the same thing, you know, just spiritually. Anyhow, um, I feel like there's someone out there that, that just needs to hear that, that there's more. The Father has so much more for you. You feel like you've been falling in the same old holes, same old traps every single day, you know, um, and you're condemning yourself and all that. You know, one of the greatest words, this guy on the street who I'd met just a couple times, one day I was walking past him. I had the worst month of my life. And this was just a few months ago. And he goes, he, literally, we, he just says hi to me. And I give him a hug. And it was the weirdest thing. He tells me about a healing that he had with a neighbor and all that, just normal Christian stuff, you know. And then he goes, um, he just says to me, I've been, I've been going through self-condemnation all this month. And the Lord told me that it's now the next chapter. You know, I've opened the book and, and it's the next chapter now. And he was speaking prophetically to me. He was, because all month it was, you're this, you're that, you're, you are so unworthy. Well, yeah, that's why Jesus Christ died for me so that I could be made worthy and holy um, there's a lot of people who need to get past the fact that you're a sinner. No, no, no. You're called to be a saint. You were a sinner. But when Holy Spirit comes and, and lives inside of you and comes into you and burns a fire inside of you and changes you, I'm telling you, I notice in the last 10 months of my life, ever since I've dropped beer, I dropped um, pornography and masturbation and all these types of things. Uh, and Holy Spirit has convicted me slowly, one by one. He doesn't just make you new like that. Maybe for some people out there, he has. For me, no. One by one, we pick off the things. Okay, Daniel, this month, I want you to stop this. This month, I'm going to you know, convict you of this. And you're going to know that this is, this is holding and hindering you back from moving in the fullness of the gifts of God and of the the power of God, the intimacy, the, this is holding you back from coming closer to God and understanding what he has in vision for you in his life. Like one of my biggest things is spending money. I don't know how to save money. I was homeless, man. I spent my money on pot anytime and I would get ripped off a lot. So, I mean, that just goes to show how bad I was with my money. I would give my money to the, to the, you know, sketchiest crackhead looking dude and expect that I was going to get something in return. But I always took those risks. I was a risk taker. I didn't care. So now I'm coming into this place where I've been given a free car, you know, and I, I, I want to hurry into these things. I rush. I bet there's people that it might be watching this. You've rushed into relationship. You rush, rushed into things, jobs, whatever it may be. Um, you might be bad with money yourself or really good with it, but bad with something else in your life. And um, God just wants you to know, stop condemning yourself over those things. And just take a minute and breathe. You know, God's been teaching me about this. There's in Psalms, it says, be still and know that I'm God. And there's been an anxiety over my life 
as well as maybe yours, that's just been plaguing you and paralyzing you. I got this word in Portland. I went to the Power and Love School. Love School with Todd White. Look it up if you ever want to really see a man who's been transformed by Holy Spirit. It's Todd White. And we have, um, you know, these similar testimonies in the sense of, of drug addiction and atheism. You know, I was only in addiction for maybe five to six years. This man, 22 years. And one of the biggest things that he tackled at this conference that I went to was anxiety and worry, man. You know, how would it be if you could just wake up in the morning and not have a single worry not anything plaguing you you could just wake up and just be so grateful to be alive you know that's where i'm coming to each day holy spirit is just bringing me into this place of of understanding what it is to be intimate with him to get to know him that it's no longer about going to church that's my biggest thing man it is not about a church it is not about the, the the Bible says, do not forsake the assembly. We are a body of Christ. We are not a body of buildings. We are a body of Christ, a spiritual body that God dwells in. You are a piece of a foot. You are, you are the pinky toe. You are the eye. You are the ear. You know, whatever part you are, even the most ignoble parts, I believe the Bible says, are the most unimportant, the pinky toe, which seems the most unimportant, is one of the most important parts. So understand that you even being the smallest factor, the babysitter, and all of somebody's kids at the church or whatever it may be, you're important. And um, there's no small person, a part of the body of Christ that is unimportant in God's eyes. He created each one of us uniquely and divinely in our mother's womb, set us apart before the foundations of the earth. God already set himself, Jesus Christ, to die before the foundations of the earth because he thought you were that worth it. He went through with it even for the people that weren't going to um, accept him as savior. You know, there's people day by day, and that's why I testify all the time. When I'm in Walmart, man, I'm not kidding. I will, I will sometimes even go out if I don't hear it and just go and pray for someone. Hey, do you have pain in your body? You know, I'm full heartedly, I've been open to this thing. I got prayed for while I was homeless. This dude prayed for my leg. I did not get healed, but about a few months later, um, I, I was walking up to Jim Morrison's cave, and all. I, this was when I was still an alcoholic and stuff, and I'm walking up to this hill. And my leg is in just major pain from the few nights before I had gotten drunk and bashed my leg. And um, I just had this small voice come into my head and it said, um, ask for it to be healed, you know. And I just, I was like, okay, leg be healed, you know, kind of kind of just doing that and all that. And I remembered how this dude had prayed for me months before for my leg to be healed, nothing happened. Well, right then and there, I'm kidding you not, this this pain just lifted off of me as if it was like, you know, I, I believe it was a spirit of infirmity just pulled off of me like that, just lifted up. I got so freaked out, man, because I was, I was so in denial that God was that real and was really wanting to get to know me. And I had so much sin in my life that I didn't want to face up to, to like, okay, you're real. I understand that now. What's next? Are you going to punish me? Because I've done a lot of bad stuff and not knowing that Jesus Christ had broken off all those curses became the curse for me so i no longer have to be you know filled with condemnation before my god it even says to stand confidently and boldly before our father asking for mercy and grace you know and that's one of the greatest things about this relationship is that we can through jesus christ you know through there's one part in isaiah it says that when you and jesus together um you know bring about what Jesus did on the cross, you know, fulfilling it. It's a co-laboring job. Like you're through your faith and through his work on the cross, he did the work. All your only job is faith, having faith that Jesus Christ actually did it for you and not doubting that he died so that you could stand, um, you know, confidently and boldly and, and with a clear conscience before an almighty, all holy God who people in the old Testament would die in his presence. Now we're called to seek his face. You know, and we're called to be holy like him so that we can stand before him because he lives in us and he wants to live through us and he wants to touch a dead and dying world and bring the color back to the face of the people who are dying. Their souls and their spirits are dead. They are spiritually dead, going to hell every single day. And he wants to bring them back to life like he did me. I'm telling you, I was a walking zombie every single day. I was looking for a high. I was walking around and I was zombified before the very eyes of every person that walked before me and around me. And I'm telling you, one day it was like the hand of God just came down on me. 
And he said, Arise, Lazarus. Arise, Daniel. And I arose from the dead, man, and his spirit came in. And this is where the most important part comes in. Asking Jesus into your heart is only the first, you know, fruit of, of what to, is to come after that. Um, you know, it's only the first step. And it's, it, there's so much more after that that he reveals. I'm telling you, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the most important thing. And this is coming from someone who used to be so against any type of, um, you know, radical Christianity, I guess you could call it, you know, Pentecostal, whatever, holy rollers. People have all these different names for it. Again, it comes to this. What are you willing to do for, if God told you to roll on the floor for an hour straight and it would open the door for you to come in and sit with him, I'd do it, man. Whatever it takes. I don't care what it is. For you, God, yes, I'll jump off the bridge if you asked me to. Um, but God's not asking that. All he's asking is that you read his Bible and understand what his word says. And his word says that they spoke in tongues and you will know them by this. They will cast demons out, which I full heartedly believe because people are plagued with, with spirits and people are plagued with demonic principalities. It says we fight not flesh and blood, but principalities and forces and strongholds, uh, you know, cosmic powers of this world. Because the God of this age is Satan and he is, you know, smart. He is a genius at what he does. I'm not going to glorify him because he's a punk in all reality. What it says in Isaiah or Ezekiel, one day we'll stand and all that with God and we'll be like, this is him. This is that fool who scared the sons of God and who ravished the earth. And you know, this, this is him. Are you kidding me? You got to be kidding me. I can't wait for that day. But, um, he, works like gangs and like a military rankage man and he works in and through people around you that's why it seems like there's no leeway and no no break in your life like no time to catch some breath because he's working in and through every single person around you because he knows that it's only a matter of time before it's the end for him and a matter of time before you're fully awakened to the truth of what god has set before you and holy spirit is that um the Holy Spirit is that person who brings you to all those truths. It says the spirit of truth will guide you into all truths and will show you things of the future. He will show you all the things to come in your life. And, and that's true through devouring the word of God each and every day. Uh, Derek Prince says that when he was sick, he ate the word of God just like medicine. I don't believe in taking pharmaceuticals anymore. I don't, I don't care. If I got cancer today, I don't receive that. I'm, I'm not you know, asking for that to happen in my life. But I'm saying if it happened to me, I've already decided, uh, you know, the Bible says, love not your life unto death. I'm not going to love my life unto death. One day I'm going to stand before my creator and I don't want to be like, well, I went to man to fix, you know, this problem that you could have fixed. It was my faith so small that I could not walk on the water. You know, Peter, you took your eyes. I don't want to take my eyes off of Jesus. Keep your eyes on, and I, I, I struggle with that. I am still a child. Every day he is maturing me like wine. After time, it ages, and it matures, and it becomes stronger. And that is where I'm at. And, and um, you know, God is that medicine, the word. It's, it's medicine. It is life to you. You need to read your Bible every single day. And I advise to anyone who's been looking for a deeper intimacy with God, Pentecost, man, that is where it's at. It's, I'm not trying to convert people to, Pente to, to, to Pentecostal, you know, I don't care about denominations. I care about this, coming close to Jesus Christ and understanding who and what you were made for. Who are you? I'm only just now, I didn't know who I was before I got saved. And I'm just now, I don't even still know who I am yet. You know, and I don't believe I'll fully know who I am until the day comes that I'm standing face to face with him and I'll know exactly who I am. And, and it used to scare me, but now I'm coming to this place of boldness and confidence of knowing that it's only a matter of time. And it's so great. It's so great. And that this journey that we're on is amazing. And, um, you know, if any of you out there just seeking truth and wanting to get to know Jesus, you know, for who he really is. And, and whether or not, he, maybe you don't even know who Jesus is and you've never met him or Holy Spirit. You know Jesus and you've never met Holy Spirit. You've never felt Holy Spirit, man. When I pray for people on the street, I go out and I lay my hand. I go like, is your back hurt? You know, I get a lot of yeses for that. And I go, well, can I pray for your back real quick? I get some no's sometimes. But when people say yes, man, it's like golden opportunity. Holy Spirit jumps on that through me, man. This heat 
comes on to me. And I'm telling you, if you feel heat right now or if you've been feeling heat during this video, that's Holy Spirit touching you right now. And, and I just declare that he's going to touch you more and you're going to grow to know that touch more. You know, because as humans, like I said, I was an addict, man. I needed the touch of a drug. Well, then Holy Spirit came and baptized me in fire, not water, but fire, like, like warmth. And this warmth that felt like he was touching me on the other side of pe plexiglass. That's how I usually tell people what it was like. It was like this. I was putting my hands up and he was, you know, in the spirit, touching my hands. And, um, you know, I got baptized and, and got the utterance of tongues and, and got to know Jesus. I was laughing for like 30 minutes and crying and just falling down. And, and I was just not like falling all over the place, but getting on my knees and stuff and just falling to my knees and in total gratefulness and praise for, for God and what he had done in my life when I'd first met him. And, and if you're really, really wondering what it is, and if you've been struggling with your faith and doubting and whatnot, I just want to pray over you right now that you can receive um, a touch from God. The Holy Spirit is going to move through you right now. He's going to touch you and you're just going to get a glimpse of what God has in store for you and that you're, you're not hopeless. You're not what people have called you. You're not a loser. You're not, a, you're not any of the things that the world has told you. The, li the liar, the father of lies, that's exactly what he is. He's a liar. Those things that have been knocking you down day by day are no longer going to. The Bible says, who the sun sets free is free indeed. And I just declare to you right now, if you're wanting to really, really, you're a radical person and you're wanting to go in a radical way towards Jesus right now, I dare you to ask Holy Spirit to just come into your heart. Not just Jesus, but the spirit that resided in Jesus. I'm telling you, it's important. It wouldn't be in the Bible if it wasn't true. Pentecost man, he said, go and tarry Jesus right before he ascended into heaven. said, go and tarry in Jerusalem. Do not leave until the helper comes, the gift from God. So Jesus sends the Holy Spirit and a gushing wind came in and tongues of fire fell down on top. That's why I know tongues are real because I've been through it, man. The devil's tried to tell me that you're just babbling, you know, and, and that that's not a real language. And, and I've battled through that, that doubt. You know what? I go by faith. I walk not by sight. I walk by faith. And my father says it in the Bible. Man, I don't believe that those gifts died off 2,000 years ago. I believe they become stronger and that the devil, if he can utilize making utilize our doubt to, to come against the, the word of God, then all more power to him because that's exactly what he wants to do. He wants to, he can't understand you if you're speaking in tongues and he can't, he can't come against you if you have the Holy Spirit in you. He can come against you, but the Holy Spirit is the helper to, to, foil the plans of the, the enemy and to, to execute this, this re restoration of your soul. And he wants to free you. And I'm just asking right now, if you're truly seeking that, sorry that I've been all over the place with this, but Holy Spirit, truly, whatever your name is, and all that wants to come and live inside of you. And, and, and he wants to change everything about you. We're talking a year from now, you'll never, you'll look back and be like, I don't even remember who I used to be. Like that person is so dead. Like, where did that go? Where, where I, I don't even feel the same. That's what happened to me. I'm telling you, man, I had dreads down to here. I was the, I looked different. I acted different. It's time to time that character pops up. I know him very well. I know that old self and a day to day Holy Spirit will make me more aware when I, you know, cause he try, he's a sneaky person. That old personality is sneaky. He will try to come in with, with lustful thoughts, lustful thoughts through the eyes, you know, looking at women or, or, you know, I am, I am a human being, but I'm a spirit inside of a body, really. You know, I live in this body. I'm trapped in this body. And, and Jesus Christ, the spirit that comes and lives in you, that comes and wakes your spirit up and becomes one with your spirit, helps you overcome this flesh. This flesh has to go. You don't want to be stuck in this flesh the day that you die, because this thing, it has to go down. I will never die. My spirit inside of me never dies. And, and, and my soul never dies. And that's why people will either be in hell or in heaven because it never goes. This, this goes away. This shell goes back down to the ground. It's cursed. But one day your soul is going to go somewhere. And, and that's all on, you know, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So no one gets to the father except through me. And I'm going to stand in front of him one day. And Jesus is going to be like, okay, my good and faithful servant or 
depart from me, you workers of iniquity. And we have to understand what the, you know, we can't do it on our own. This flesh will run your life until the Holy Spirit comes and lives in you. Uh, again, Acts 2.23, I believe is the one, Acts 2 for sure. And you just read that, man, um, and understand it like this. Peter before baptism, Peter after baptism. Peter before denied Christ. That we're the same way, man. Holy Spirit will come into your life and be like, look, we got to we gotta do this. And you're going to be like, uh, 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 uh. That old personality will say no. And all that. But when you get baptized and that Holy Spirit comes in you, there comes a love for God. His love in you comes and you don't want to disappoint your father there comes a point where you don't want to hurt him anymore you don't want to hurt his feelings because you feel his feelings i feel god's feelings now more often i i pray for more of that in my life and in your life so that we can sympathize god sympathized with our human nature now we get to partake with his divine nature and sympathize with how he feels you know, watching his children every day. I'm telling you, there are times when I walk in Walmart and I'm looking around and I see people who are literally going to hell. Who are literally dying in, in you know, 300 pounds overweight or whatever it may be. Or living in, in complete sin and, you know, for all I know, beating their wives or, or, you know, pedophilia. All these horrible things, man. You know, I've done some horrible stuff. I understand it. And I was destined for hell. But God grabbed me and he used people in his spirit through people, hence why the Holy Spirit has to come and live inside of us, because he needs vessels to work through. And so I just pray right now um, for whoever it is that's watching this, and it, if you've made it this far into the video, God bless you, and, and God has so much in store for you. In Jeremiah, he says, uh, I have plans to prosper you and, and you know hope for you, not to harm you, but to prosper you and to bring you into to greatness, you know? And if you seek him diligently with all your heart, you will find me, he says. I mean, that's a promise. Hold to that promise. And I just pray abundance over you right now. I just feel this, this weighty presence of God on me. It's like a tangible feeling over my body. And I'm telling you, if you felt that or you're feeling it now, I want you to just say, Holy Spirit, I receive your love. Holy Spirit, I receive you right now. I bind any strong man coming against any person watching this video, and I command their body to receive the Holy Spirit right now. And, and you've come this far, and God wants you to know that this isn't the end. There's so much more that he has planned for you, and, and even more so when we get to eternity. It's just going to be so amazing for us to get to know him every single day. And he wants to get to know you more on this earth as if it was for the very first time through you getting to know him. You know, um, God is such a master at that. Laughing at, it, laughing with us at your jokes as if it was the very first time. There's times, I'm telling you, where Holy Spirit has laughed through me. I remember once I was sitting down. I'm going to make this short. And, and he, I was sitting and I was just so upset. I'm like, man, God, the devil has jacked me up. He has screwed me up. He has messed me up. My thoughts are so horrible. Even after this, you know, my life's been changed and I've been saved. But I'm in, I'm in a hell every day sometimes, Lord. And, and I just, I remember I felt, I heard this thought. And it was, man, the devil thought he jacked you up. And I'm like, where is this coming from? Who's, am I saying that? Are these my thoughts? And I'm not kidding. This grin comes onto my face like this. And he goes, man, the devil thought he jacked you up. And I'm just like, okay. And he goes, and I just start busting out laughing. I'm not kidding. It was like, this is where I realized Holy Spirit lives in me and, and it's his emotion, not me no longer. It's no longer, Paul says it like this, it's no longer I who lives, but Christ in me. And that's exactly what God's calling us to do. He's making a holy race of people. Jesus was the first fruits of this holy race of people that he's making. And they're going to be people who are filled with the Holy Spirit, who no longer are tied to sin any longer, who are no longer calling themselves sinners, but they're saints. Paul did not go around going, oh, poor me, I'm, I'm a sinner, and you're all destined to be sinners, but one day we'll make it to heaven. No, no, no. He knew that he was called for a higher thing, and he was a part of this holy race of people after Jesus Christ died on this the cross and that are going to live in heaven forever and and they're a whole new creation humans 
Adam was the first man-giving soul, you know, and, or, um, um, yeah, I can't remember exactly what it says, but um, life-giving soul, and then Jesus Christ was the first life-giving spirit. And that's what we are. A whole new, I mean, isn't that mind-blowing? A whole new race of people. We are a new creation. That's why I've always felt so, uh, set apart and so felt like different and distant from this world. I've never fit in. I've never fit in. And it was because before the foundations of the earth, I was predestined, man. And I was, I was consecrated in my mother's womb, set apart for a holy mandate on this planet. And, um... And the Holy Spirit just kept, I'm back to that story, he, he just laughed so hard. He said, man, the devil thought he jacked you up. But, and I got this vision of me like stepping out of my house and the devil out there just like looking at me and his jaw just dropping like, and, all I, and, 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 and the Holy Spirit just gave me this perfect vision of it. And he goes, man, just wait until he sees what I'm gonna do to you. I'm gonna jack you up so much, man. And I just, I just got this vision of just like totally equipped with this humble, like I saw a vision of me, no longer that person that I used to be, but that person put off in this divine character of every bit of who Jesus was. Like someone could come up and put a gun to my head, man. And I'm just going to be like, have you heard about Jesus, man? Do you know your, your Lord and Savior? Pop right in my head. And I'm not going to no longer, you know, that old person would have like fought, you know, and, and tried to fight for my life. No longer, man. I, I just see this this character of complete love. And the devil hates that because the most powerful thing is love. You know, God is love. And the devil hates it because he's full of pride and he's a liar and he's full of hate. He hates God. He hates God. But our God, greater is he who lives in me, Holy Spirit, than he who is in the world. And so I just, I remember him laughing so hard inside of me. And he's like, man, you just wait. And he wants to do that for you. He wants to, to take all the flaws and go, look, the devil thinks he has done these. He's built these, these strongholds in your life. He's built these strong towers and these, these barbed wire. Every time you come near these things in your life, they cut you. They hurt you. They're the razor blades in your life. No longer. These are going to be razor blades against the enemy. He's going to turn these things and they're going to be things for when the enemy tries to come into you and no longer can he because he, the God is God has become your refuge. God becomes the the double-edged sword that cuts every lie that comes in, you know, against you, comes against the truth of God in your life. So right now I just I just bless you. Bless you, bless you. I'm going to be writing um songs, uh doing spontaneous worship on this Tumblr. Um, I'm really praying that if, if you, this has touched you in any way, message me. I, I'm really not ever one to do this. I, I, I don't usually do this stuff. It's all Holy Spirit. So I'm, I'm believing right now that somebody's watching this and that you, you, God's been calling you out. God's inviting you to a deeper intimacy of who he is. I'm telling you, man, I went straight from ghetto on the streets. You know, I witnessed stabbings, man. I witnessed... Um, just the worst of the worst, possessions of people, demonic possessions. I've witnessed things that would blow people's minds. And, and, and God has rescued me from that and brought me in. This dude prayed for me a year ago, and I come back to this town looking for, you know, where I'm supposed to be, and he just brings me into his home. I'm telling you, God has set up plans before the foundations of the earth for you. And God wants to show you how he's going to take every bit of your worry. Like, what's going to happen next, Lord? What's going to happen? Instead of worrying, you're just going to be like, Lord, how do I love you? How do I praise you? What do I do for you? Instead of like, what are you going to do for me next? It's not going to be us looking for his hand anymore or worrying and, and going like, God, fix this problem. Like, everything's going to be fixed because God's going to take those worries away. And he's going to bring you into an intimacy because like love surpasses all knowledge. And, and you don't have to worry anymore. You know, because like all this brain does and all this mind does is obsess over things that are of no use to the kingdom of God, man. God has already looked out every step that he's written out your book already. If everything's already planned out, why would we worry? It's already written. It's already done. Why wouldn't you rather just ask him, okay, Lord, what does my book say? Like, what's, 
what do you have planned next? You know, if you want to tell me those things, and I believe he does want to tell us those things. He's told me I'm, I'm, a, I'm a musician. I, I am going to write music. I'm going to do these things. I am going to speak to people. My testimony is going to speak to people, and it's going to um, inspire people to, to know that they're not alone and that, and that there is a gold in them, a treasure that God is bringing up, and, and he's going to use it. And it's worth more than anything on this planet. You are worth more than anything on this whole entire planet. Worth more all out of all creation. The, the beautiful stars, the Milky Way galaxies. You're what God wants. Isn't that amazing? Out of all, I mean, there is so much beauty. I sit and I look at the stars and I go, God, it's so breathtaking. And, and yet you want me. You could be out in the galaxies just surfing all of it. And he has probably so many more beautiful galaxies out there. And yet he wants to be right here in this room with me. And he wants to be right in that room with you. And he wants to live inside of you. And he wants to go touch people through you and in you and, and around you, through your, your mom, your dad, your, your family, your sister, your brother, your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your daughter, your son, every single person you come into contact with, man, he wants to use you to heal people. I believe that God will heal the sick and use these hands to do it. You know, that is another thing um, that we will get into further in these blogs that I'm going to do. And, and I've seen healings, man. We've seen a kid, uh, 17 years old, get healed from cancer. I'm telling you, God will do amazing things through you if you're ready for the radical and you're ready to, to really drastically come to know um, the God of the universe, not the God of your mind, not the paradigm that you've built in your mind or other people or, or church has built in your mind, but the God who is living in the universe and living in this place and in this room and, and is speaking through me to you to get to you. Um, so thank you again, Daniel. And uh, if, if this has touched you in any way, message me. Bless you guys. I just want to reach out to all those and be able to help people. And, and people help me. You know, we're a family. Um, each body parts provides to another. I need you. You need me. I love you. Bless you, whoever you are. In the name of Jesus Christ, I just ask for fire and baptism of love from God and I just ask for um, abundance of your life. All sickness leave, all fear leave, all anxiety leave and I just, I bind any strong man coming against any person that would watch this video and I speak a new song a new revelation over you of God's love and peace in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. God bless uh, See you next time